cards on to them. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Please grab a seat. All right, thank you. Well, good morning. Um, you're at the uh, Palm Beach County Zoning Commission. Uh, today is November 2nd, 2023. Uh, can I have a roll call, please? <coughs> Sherry Pavlik. Here. John Kern. Mike Kelly. Here. Glenn Broman. Here. Sherry Scarborough. Here. Lisa Revis. Here. Alex Brumfield III. Here. Mark Beatty. Here. Jess Sowers. Here. Okay, we have a quorum. Um, opening prayer and pledge. Yes, please stand for the uh, opening prayer and the pledge. Lord, we ask your guidance today as we consider matters that will affect the safety and welfare of many people in our country, county. Help us listen with open minds to matters that are important before us and to act on those matters that will benefit those who reside in our area. Keep our minds opened and alert, our hearts compassionate, and our comments charitable. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> The Zoning Commission of Palm Beach County has convened at 9 o'clock a.m. in the Vista Center, Ken Rogers Hearing Room, B.C. 1W47-2300 North Jogger Road, West Palm Beach, Florida, to consider proposed applications and staff recommendations pursuant to the Palm Beach County Unified Land Development Code. The Commission takes final action regarding Class B conditional uses, subdivision variances, and Type 2 variances and issues, advisory recommendations, and other requests. The Board of County Commissioners of Palm Beach County will conduct a public hearing at 301 North Olive Avenue, West Palm Beach, Florida, in the Jane M. Thompson Memorial Chambers, 6th floor at 9.30 a.m. on applications not subject to Zoning Commission final actions. <clears throat> zoning hearings are quasi-judicial in nature and must be conducted to afford all parties due process. The Board of County Commissioners have adopted procedures of conduct for quasi-judicial hearings to govern the conduct of such proceedings. The procedures include the following. Any communication with commissioners, which occurs outside the public hearing, must be fully disclosed at the hearing. <clears throat> Applicants and persons uh, attending the hearing may question commissioners regarding their disclosures. Such questions may be limited solely to disclosures made at the hearing or the written communications made a part of the record at the meeting. Any persons representing a group or organization must provide documentation that the person representing the group has actual authority to do so regarding the matter before the commission. Any person who wishes to speak at the hearing will be sworn in and may be subject to cross-examination. The applicant and county staff uh, may cross-examine witnesses. Any other persons attending the hearing may subject, uh, submit cross-examination questions including follow-up examination is limited to the facts uh, alleged by the witness in relation to the application. Public comment is encouraged and all relevant information should be made present to the commission in order that a fair and appropriate decision can be made. Uh, can we have a proof of publication? Motion to receive. So moved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Scarborough, seconded by Commissioner Pavlik. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Um, swearing in. Anyone wishes to speak before the commission, please stand up and be sworn in. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. Thank you. Okay. Minutes. We have approval of minutes. Move to approve the minutes as written. And I'll second. Okay. Approval by Commissioner Scarborough, seconded by Commissioner Groman. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Amendments to the agenda. 
Okay, we do have a few uh, amendments to the agenda. Item number nine, SV 2022-01890 GLMC Warehouse. Um, we have a request to postpone, so when we get to that portion of the agenda, uh, the board will have to take action on it due to its timing of the request. Um, and the backup is provided on the add delete. And then on the consent agenda, item number one, CB 2023-651, Big Dreams Preschool, uh, amending a Class B condition of approval in Exhibit C, specifically compliance number one. Okay, thank you. Um, request to pull items from consent. I would like to pull agenda item number three. Okay, any other amendments? Or <coughs> Ads, like bulls, okay. Uh, we do have comments on item five. Um, should we read those now or does that come later? We have two cards. That would be when you get to the consent agenda. No, mm -hmm. uh, no not yet, so. We not haven't yet. done postponements yet, correct? So we're not, we're not there yet. Okay, correct. okay. All right, so we need a motion to to move um, to pull the consent item number three. Move to pull consent agenda item number three. Second. Second. Okay, approval by Commissioner Scarborough, seconded by Commissioner Pavlik. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Um, so then that's the motion to adopt the agenda then, right? <laughs> Um, well, yeah, I think, yeah. So we need a motion to adopt the agenda as amended with the polling of item number nine. Number three. Some and, no, and polling number three. No, just number three. Just number three. Number okay. three. Yep. Move to approve the agenda, polling agenda item number three to regular agenda. And postpone item and postpone number nine. postpone agenda item no. number we, we have to discuss that. You need to adopt the agenda as amended, as I had read it, and then as we've pulled. So that's what you would do. Okay. The motion move. is. So moved by Commissioner uh, uh, Scarborough, seconded by Commissioner Pavlik. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Disclosures. So with regards to um, the Chabad um, uh, item on the um, non-consent agenda, I spoke to Peter Sachs, Scott Backman, Ralph Bayer Morris, and also uh, Commissioner Marcy Woodward and her staff. Okay, no thank exposure. you. No. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, I spoke with uh, the applicant on uh, item number eight, ZV00375. <clears throat> on item number eight, I spoke with Peter Sachs and John Channing. On item eight, I spoke with the applicant and their representative, Mr. Nichols. I spoke to Peter Sachs, Ralph De La Vega, and John Channing. On agenda number eight, I spoke with Commissioner Sachs, Peter Sachs, Gary Shears, Woodfield HOA President, Scott Backman, Rabbi. Gobin, as well as emails from several of the surrounding communities. Okay, and I too, on item eight, had spoken with Peter Sachs, John Channing, Ralph Dallavega, Rabbi Coben, Josh Nichols, and Scott Backman. Um, conflicts and recusals. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, I, uh, I'm gonna recuse myself on items number two, three, and five. Uh, reason is my firm, Architecture Green, has uh, design contracts with Jay Morton Architecture and Planning. Big dreams. Okay, thank you. Any others? Yep. No other recusals? Okay. Um, more cards? Okay. Okay. Okay, uh, here we go. Postponements, remands, withdrawals agenda. So. Okay, so um, on our ad delete, we have a request um, from the applicant um, to postpone um, item number nine. 
um, SV 2022-01890. So requests have to um, be submitted to be done administratively um, within nine days before you get the packet. Um, otherwise, it's at the discretion of the board. So we will need a vote. Um, the applicant has requested it. Staff is in support of it. Um, so it's up to you. We need a vote to postpone it. Motion to postpone. Second. I'm sorry, who? Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. A motion by Commissioner Kelly, seconded by Commissioner Scarborough. All those in favor say aye. 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 Second? Or opposed? Okay, thank you. Um, withdrawals. Okay, there on no to withdrawals. the Okay, on to the consent agenda. Correct. So we have cards on item one and five, but we also need to separate uh, items two and five from consent. So two and three. Two and oh, I'm sorry, two and three. Five's on regular, right? No, no, no. Three They're on all. regular. So. Item three is on regular. We pulled oh. three so, from regular, so two and five um, have to be separate. Right. So you have cards on item number one. Would you like a presentation, or would you like to hear from the people that submitted the cards on item number one? What is it? What do the cards say? Uh, on item one, wish to support speak. and wish to speak and support and oppose and wish to speak, so. Okay. So at this time then, anyone who wishes to speak on item one has, has submitted yep. a card if you want to come up and. I'll call the names and have okay. them. Okay. Yeah. So um, t we've got two, so one at each podium. So uh, Linda, uh, uh, looks like Belmora, and uh, the other person, Prav Pravina. Yeah, it's Nar Narl. I'm sorry. Penmanship is difficult for me to see on this other Hi, one. Hi, I'm Linda Bamoris, but it was item eight. Oh, it item says eight? one. I know. I just got here. And okay. All there right. Was confusion. Okay. 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 All right. So, I'm so item eight will come later. Thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, gentleman on Clintmore Road, eight three four five. Hi, actually, I'm for uh, item eight. My name is Pravin from Clinton Road. Oh, you're okay. on item two? Okay. okay. Yeah, All sorry right. about All that. Right. No worries. Okay. There we go. All right. All right, okay. so we have comments on item number five. So um, actually, I have uh, uh, Bridget, but she wants to give her time to Ray Markinkowski. So I guess, Ray, if you would come up to the podium and you'll have um, your three minutes. Do we have to vote on that or just give them? Can we no, give them the six? three minutes, yeah. The three minutes and the three minutes? Can mm -hmm. they get six? It's at the discretion of the chair. If the person giving their time is present and can identify themselves, then it would be up to the chair to allow them to get the extra three minutes. Okay. Can you please state your name and address for the record, please? Ray Marcinkowski, 6666 43rd Avenue South, Lake Worth, Florida. Also property owner of the road to the north side of the project. Now, I really don't know what's happening. I can't seem to find out. But a year or two ago, when they went to rezone this, there's supposed to be a concrete panel wall along our road. And every time I talk to somebody, I get a different answer. So I don't know if the concrete wall is in the plans or not, or if it's been removed. Or do we want to have okay. a presentation to show that? Is that so? Is that the question for staff to? You just want to know if the if there's a concrete wall as part of the petition, part of the proposal. Yes, and if it runs all the way down. <laughs> okay. The length of the property on the north side. Can we some, have some help from staff on that? The, the applicant has the answer to the question. Okay. Please state your name and address for the record, please. Hi, Lauren McClellan with J. Morton Planning and Landscape Architecture. There is a wall. It's under, the project's under construction right now, and there's going to be a solid concrete wall along the north side of the property. Yeah, I thought the wall was supposed to be built before the project started. Um, I don't know the exact timing and the conditions, but there is going to be a wall on the north side of that property, yes. Okay, and then I don't really understand what's supposed to be going in. I know they said a restaurant. Is it a Chick-fil-A, supposedly? <laughs> um, so it's uh, replacing a gas station at the southwest corner of the property with a fast food restaurant, which will be a Chick-fil-A. Will traffic back up into either hot or Okay, North I think what the, what needs to happen is the app. This gentleman needs I'm to do all of his comments, and then we can respond mm -hmm. to all of them. Versus, yeah, yeah we don't need a need a debate. Yeah. Um, and I'm happy also to to meet with you as well. 
Okay. Yeah, I, I think that name? would be the best thing if, if you guys got together so you had a complete understanding instead of debating it here. Yes, and I'd like to remind the board there's no final action being taken today on this application. There, are, It's all subject to this board's recommendation. The adoption of, of the development order amendment would be at the Board of County Commissioners, which is not till the, I think, the 29th of November. So there's quite a bit of time between today and now for the applicant and the property owner to discuss the changes up to the site plan. Mm -hmm. Are you good with that, with meeting with them and getting better understanding yeah, on the- Who do I meet with? Um, she will give you your, her card. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, where were we? We have to pull um, two. Okay, we're pulling items. Okay, so we need a, an amendment or a motion for that then, right? Yep. So I'd like to make a motion to pull items two and five uh, on a separate consent because Mr. Beatty can't, Commissioner Beatty can't vote on that. Is that? He has to recuse on two and five. Yeah, you're not you're not pulling it. You're, you're just doing a separate. Separate. Vote. I'm sorry. That's what I meant. Yeah, I apologize. So you're doing a motion on item number one, four, six, one, four, and six, and seven, and seven, yes. six and seven. Yep. So so the motion is to approve the agenda, the consent, consent agenda, agenda for agenda. one, yeah. four, balance six, and the, seven. The balance of the consent agenda, which I'll second. Okay, so mo uh, motion by Commissioner Pavlik, seconded by Commissioner uh, Groman. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Um, okay, so now we'll go to item two. Two and five. Now you want to do a motion for items two and five. Two and five to pull from the consent agenda. No, no, just no to approve. approve. Oh, just to approve. To okay. approve. Nobody pulled okay. it earlier. Gotcha. So. gotcha. Move to approve agenda item uh, number two and number five. Second. Okay, motion by Commissioner Scarborough, second by Commissioner Groman. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Recuse. Mm -hmm. We got a recusal there. Okay. We did recuse it. Um, Mr. Chair, I'm, yeah. I think I might be a little confused. I don't us remember us doing conflicts and recusals. We did disclosures. We did. We did, we did okay. yeah. We did. Yeah, Mr. Okay. Commissioner Beatty had uh, Commissioner Beatty recused recusals. himself from two, three, and five. Okay, sorry. Okay, so that's the end of the consent agenda. Uh, that'll bring us to the regular agenda, and the first is items pulled from consent, which would bring us to item number three. ZBDOA W2023-00372, Lions Glade Center. Uh, the application before the board includes requests for a type two variance, as well as a development order amendment. Turn it over to the applicant for a yes, presentation. Please. Hi, uh, Alex Ehrenholz with Jay Morton Planning and Landscape Architecture. Um, happy to make a presentation or we can ask if there was a specific question you had. And yeah. I can do the full presentation if you would like. Yeah, I, I would like a presentation and maybe a shortened version, but okay. I'm trying to understand. I'm sorry, I'm trying to understand exactly what all the variances are for and, and what's going on in that corner. Okay. Um, so it's the Lions Glade Center. Uh, it was built in the 80s. It's on the northwest corner of Glades and Lions Road. It's not working. Okay. Uh, yeah, so it's about 4.86 4 acres on the northwest corner of Glades and Lions Road. Uh, we are requesting 12 type 2 variances. Uh, all elements are existing and constructed uh, as per the 1989 approved site plan. Um, so they've been there for many years now. And the other request is for a development order amendment to add and delete square footage of buildings. Uh, so it is zoned MEPD, as is most other parcels around that intersection. Uh, the request mainly stems from the, the existing center being expanded by adding this parcel uh, highlighted to the west. Uh, it was previously approved uh, for a car wash that was 4,000 square feet. And uh, that was in 2019. It was approved by the BCC, which included all of these variances. Uh, and then that site plan was just never finalized. So the 
the approval sunset, so we have to come back in and get the, the approvals again. Um, but this time we are doing it for a medical office building. Uh, so there's no more car wash. We're doing medical office, northern part of the site. So the along glades, you'll see a, a expanded retention pond that is currently one there today. It'll just be extended a little bit more. Uh, and then we're adding a medical office building in the back. The existing buildings are remaining as, as existing today. Uh, so the I'm going to go through the variances. There's 12 of them. Uh, eight are related to landscaping. Uh, so it requires it's the uh, right of way width, uh, buffer, the landscape islands, the divider medium width. It's it's all just the dimensions of of a landscaping that's been there for decades. Uh, so the right of way buffer you can see along Lyons uh, is is too too small. The divider median between these two parking areas is too small, uh, and that landscape island width is is too small as constructed. Uh, and it's all matching the approved site plan. Uh, additionally, foundation plantings aren't provided in front of these two buildings. Uh, they have a colonnade instead in front of the parking area. Uh, the, the other remaining four landscape conditions are for landscape island widths with, with the curbing specifically, the easements within landscape buffers, uh, landscape islands requiring curbing and landscape island planting. Uh, so those specifically are our number eight and 11 are the encroachment of, you can see the uh, fire hydrant there in the, um, in the island. Those trees are gonna have to be removed because there's a uh, water line that runs underneath there uh, for the fire hydrant. Uh, so that's more of a, a newer condition that the easements can't be completely under, uh, that it'll be a 10 foot easement directly over top of the, the landscape island. Uh, and then the easements all, also overlapping the landscape buffer along Lions Road which is that same one that's reduced. Most, most of that happened because of right-of-way dedication over the years. So it wasn't a, it wasn't a condition at first, but now that there's, there's that easement overlapping, the, the width of the buffer is too small. Um, then again, that same divider median doesn't have curbing. Uh, so then there are three variances for Article 3, and those are to the MEPD standards uh, that this has to apply to, uh, which is the rear setbacks, the minimum lot size, and the type three incompatibility buffer that's required along the north side. And then uh, finally a, a sign setback. So those are uh, the setbacks and the, uh, the setback on the right side of the screen and the incompatibility buffer are requirements of an MEPD that wasn't previously required when it was just general commercial. And then the, the sign setback shown on the corner uh, was it, is a result of the right of way dedication uh, many years ago. So our building in the back is a proposed building for uh, is not really is not being affected by anything. That's all these requests along long lines and along the property lines uh, from the existing buildings. Uh, so, so with that, we uh, staff is recommending approval. Uh, all all <laughs> all site elements are constructed um, and we uh, agree with all staff's conditions. So that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> There's a lot of variances. Still, yeah, I'm still confused yeah. on, on <laughs> I, I can hit what the, it is that, that we're trying to accomplish. So it's everything that was already constructed, just grandfathering it in. So we, we kind of nitpicked through the details, and it was things that we can't we can't expand a, a divider median without taking out full parking rows. Uh, we can't expand a landscape island without taking out parking rows. Uh, we can't change the building, obviously, because of the foundation plantings aren't provided and there's just a colonnade there. So it's it's the things, uh, and also right away dedication was happened and and so the buffer's not as wide as it should be. So it, it's many things over the years and we can't physically change the site without having a hardship. So it, it meets the criteria of having the and, and for, for all 12. And there's additional building? Is, Is there it, an Yeah, there's a new building in the back, but that's not part of the variance request. I can go back to the... And the new but building that's what brings us yeah. so is, here is because there's a new building being proposed. Correct. Yeah, so, so we're expanding the, expanding the site a little bit to, to the west, at adding a new parcel, which is just adding this new building. Um, but those front three are the ones that have all the variants of requests around them. And the pictures I showed were the, like, the one example. It, it's very minor. Otherwise, the rest of the site is meeting it. Uh, it's just it's a, a few minimal sections where we can't meet code without taking out parking or taking out an existing building. And so the uh, does this have a yeah? So the, the park the 
parking lot currently ends here. So all those all those variances are kind of down in this section or along Lions Road. Um, and then we're we're creating this new parking area that's meeting code as well as the building meeting setbacks and and providing landscape buffers where we where we can to meet code up along building four. And the building the proposed building number four is a medical. Yes, medical office. And that th there's no variances for for that building. No. So it's cleanup of the existing okay. as a result of the application okay. coming in. Yeah. Mr. Chair, I have a quick question mm -hmm. for the applicant. So. So isn't there an access road to the AT&T switch? Is that on this property or is that to the to the west? It's to the west. Um, I mean, there's we're replacing an existing access road and, and abandoning that easement, but there's connection to to all facilities and and the buffer how do you, how do you through, through the church property of the, on the west. So my understanding is that there's a there's a long access road currently along the west side of the property, which goes to the AT&T switch. Yeah, because uh, so we have it highlighted here. It's, it's a standalone parcel that has an easement, an access easement over it, uh, that will be abandoning exactly. it. But you can see that there's a there's an access here from the church, and that goes that connects it connects through to to access those those utilities. Okay. 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 Provide some clarification. Yeah. 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 Okay, so since I was pulled, we need a motion. Any comments from the board or anything from staff? No, nothing more from staff. Okay. Um, board discussion? Okay, you entertain a motion? Move to approve. Uh, let's see, where am I? A type two variance to allow a reduction in the width of the right-of-way buffer, type three incompatibility buffer, landscape islands, divider medians, and foundation planting reduction in the building and freestanding sign setback to allow an easement overlap of landscape islands and right-of-way buffer and to eliminate, and to eliminate landscaping protection measures and trees and landscape islands and to eliminate a wall within a type three incompatibility buffer on 4.8. Eight six acres. And I'll okay. second. Okay, we got a motion by Commissioner Scarborough, seconded by Commissioner Groman. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Um okay. there's another this item. Motion to approve three B to reconfigure the site plan, add deleted uses and add square footage on four point eight six acres. Okay, back in. Motion by Commissioner Scarborough, second by Commissioner Groman. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you. Next. That's it. Done five. No. So that's I've the end of the consent agenda. The or the end of item that number three. Okay. So that moves that? us on to item number eight. Okay. Yep. Okay. That, so that ends consent agenda. We're moving on to regular agenda. Right. Um, so item number eight is ZV 2023-00375, the Chabad Chai Center. And the request before the board is a type two variance related to the reduction in arrear setback. Uh, we will turn it over to the applicant for a presentation and then <clears throat> staff. Thank you, Wendy. Good morning, board. Josh Nichols with Schmidt Nichols representing uh, Chabad High Center this morning. Uh, appreciate the opportunity. So we'll go through the presentation. I know we have uh, quite a few folks on both sides here. Uh, today, so we'll kind of get through that and uh, hopefully give them some time to to discuss before I so this this morning we have uh, Rabbi Gopin with us as well as Scott Backman, our land use attorney. I'm going to turn it over quickly to Rabbi Gopin to go through what Chabad is and then he'll shoot it back over to me. Good morning. Uh, first, I'd like to say thank you for taking the time to hear about this very important project. My name is Rabbi Guppin. I live in Woodville Country Club, across the street from where we hope our future synagogue will be with my wife and four young children. We have about 150 families who are involved right now with Chabad. In Judaism, proximity of a synagogue is of paramount importance. On holidays and on Saturdays, which adds up to about 60 days of the year, we're meant to walk to synagogue. So obviously that requires the synagogue to be within close proximity to our community, many of whom are members in Woodfield, St. Andrews, and some in Long Lakes as well. 
we looked extensively for a location for the synagogue and pretty much the only property within miles is this parcel right here. There is nothing else. It's all country clubs, retail shops. There is nothing else within walking distance outside of this lot. So we're very happy when we found this lot. It's zoned for a house of worship and we figured this was it. Let me address that point, the fact that it's zoned for a house of worship. You may hear a lot of things here today, but we're not here to discuss usage. Usage on this parcel is approved by right. Ag Reserve was designed for agricultural reserve as well as civic and community uses, such as a house of worship, which is what we're asking for today. So the usage is approved. We're here for one specific reason, a singular setback. That's the only variance we're asking for. In place of the 100-foot setback generally asked for in the Ag Reserve, we're asking for a 60-foot setback, a reduction of 40 feet. About this setback, it impacts absolutely nobody. I know that's a very strong statement, but hear me out. Don't take my word for it. Read every one of the emails you've received in opposition. Not one of them mentions a setback. They'll mention traffic, they'll mention a school, they'll mention this residential area. We've already discussed that it's approved usage for a house of worship. We're not here to discuss that. We're here to discuss one setback. By their own admission, the setback isn't the issue. Now the facts. The facts on the ground are the following. The property to the north is a retention pond owned by the county. It's three plus acres. <clears throat> Between the retention pond and the closest neighborhood, which is Horseshoe Acres, where many of the residents are from that are in opposition, there's a three acre plus pond. There's a thicket of trees, probably 30 to 35 feet tall. The closest property line is about 500 feet away, give or take. The closest property is almost 600 feet away. A reduction of 40 feet in the setback has no tangible impact to anybody. Look at the staff report that was given to you today, and I'll quote, granting of the requested variance will not be injurious to the area involved or otherwise detrimental to the public welfare. Staff's own words. By their own admission, the facts on the ground and based on the county staff report you've all received, a setback is not of any tangible impact to the neighbors. I think this should settle the case with regard to what impact that might have. I'd like to point out that we're not asking for any more square footage. It's the exact same size of what's allowed on that property. We're just asking to reconfigure the site and the footprint so that it'll be conducive to a synagogue and not have this long bowling alley type building, which wouldn't allow us to have a synagogue on the site. I know as zoning board members, you're tasked with a very difficult job. What is in the best interest of our community and all of its residents? In my mind, there shouldn't be a question here. The answer should be yes. This is exactly the type of project that the Ag Reserve was designed for. There's a clear and compelling need in the community. And the variance that you're being asked to give will have no tangible impact on the neighborhood. A synagogue is a place where people of all ages come to better themselves through study, through prayer, and through meditation. In the last few years, especially since COVID, we've seen a tremendous uptick in mental health, depression, and other issues. There's no question that a huge part of that is due to the fact that we're in isolation and we were not together. I cannot begin to tell you how many hours over the last few years, teenagers, people of all ages have come to Chabad to volunteer, to give to others, to be together, to have a sense of warmth, of community, of being together. That is exactly the antidote we need. With everything going on in the world today, we need to add in that togetherness, in community, in warmth, and light. I think the synagogue will be just that place. Thank you. So, please. Thank you, Rabbi. So, board, I'm going to now go into some of the, the technicals and, and some of the things that the rabbi sent, said um, show those graphically so you can kind of see what we're talking about. So, again, site location here is on the north side of Clintmore and just west of Florida's Turnpike. As you can see to the top right corner is St. Andrew's Country Club, as well as to the south side of Clintmore is Woodfield Country Club. And those two communities. Uh, have now reached out and they are they are not in opposition and they make up about approximately 2,000 families within those two communities. Uh, we also do have some members in Long Lake Estates, which is to the bottom, uh, I guess the southwest, and then you have Horseshoe Acres, which is uh, to the north of the subject site. 
Also, I wanted the uh, red dashed line is the pedestrian connection uh, that is already provided uh, to be able to walk, because a lot of the parishioners do uh, walk to the facility or proposed facility. So let's just go a little bit of the property history. So 2002, or sorry, going back before that, the subject site originally consisted of 10 acres. So prior to the FDOT um, taking for the turnpike, we were at 10 acres. After that, uh, got chopped down to about 6.8 acres, and that was taking uh, 3.2 acres out of the uh, west, or sorry, the eastern parcel. Then moving forward to 2002, Palm Beach County acquired through eminent domain proceedings an additional four acres, taking the property down to 2.7 acres. So again, that drainage parcel uh, came out. They were compensated, but it was uh, due to eminent domain proceedings. So that rendered the site nonconforming. Moving forward, there was also, dur actually during that same time around the 2002, there was a Lakeward Drainage District 30-foot easement, as well as a 25-foot drainage uh, easement from Palm Beach County. Uh, so all in all, 7.54 acres <clears throat> have been eliminated from this site for development, which is, reflects 75%. So we're trying to now build on 25% per, of what was originally there. So we originally had three variances that we were requesting. One was the property size, the depth, and then the setback. Uh, staff actually worked, we worked closely with, with staff through this process and they were able to find a provision in Article 1 and we'll talk about that in detail, but uh, that said if you have eminent domain proceedings against the property and it's reduced below the, the size and, and depth, you don't need a variance. But it did have one provision that said you still need to get variance, or you still have to meet the setback for the district. Well, setback for this district is 100 feet on the front and the rear. We only have 261 feet of depth for this property remaining, and 200 feet of that has to be for setbacks. So it, it's different than a lot of the uh, setbacks that you'd see in other districts. But anyways, here's our 40-foot rear setback variance, again, giving uh, 60 feet remaining. So this would be, if we had to do 100 feet on each side, you're left with a, with a small bowling alley-shaped shape building in the middle. Uh, so instead of it being a nice square where you can really design and lay out the interior, you get more of a stretched out, um, narrow building. And I know traffic is not part of this, neither is really the site plan or the use, I know, but it will come up, but I just wanted to make sure that we showed the ADT chart. Very, very low traffic. You're talking about one turn every 10, 12 minutes or so uh, in the peak, uh, so very low traffic. So a couple of points of the justification, then I'll show you a graphic that goes along with these. But again, with the eminent domain, with the four acres taking the 100 foot front and rear setbacks, leaving 61 feet for a building, uh, for a building envelope is just not feasible. Uh, we have a 600 foot separation from the nearest residential dwelling to the north. Uh, the reduced setback does not increase the building coverage beyond what the comp plan allows. So we're not asking for a building square footage or an FAR or coverage that would represent the 6.8 acres that we originally had we've we've narrowed that down to the 2.7 so we're asking for that 15 percent building coverage based on the 2.7 the the current size of the property another thing we looked at too is if if palm beach county had had done this as an easement the drainage parcel we'd be at 6.8 acres we'd have the we'd have the setback we'd have the 6.8 acres we'd be above the five minimum and we wouldn't be here today uh, so that that's interesting too. Why it wasn't done as an easement? Also, the uh, the size. Yeah. So we would be set back 446 feet if that was done as an easement. Also, the drainage parcel could have been in a different configuration. Could have been in an L to give us the 300 feet. Could have been in a lot of different ways. So again, it really all these things I'm putting in your head because th these are impediments to the site and to be able to develop. So again, just to show you in graphic form. So you see the site site plan there uh, at the bottom. Uh, bottom right and you see also um, which I'm sure will come up in some of the public comments but the school that's already approved remember already approved on the books the school to the west um, I have highlighted the buildings that are approved in blue and what's interesting is they actually have a 50 foot side setback so they have a 50 foot side setback to the same drainage parcel that we're asking for a 60 foot setback to that same exact parcel and their their buildings are closer to residential but what I wanted to show on this was that we're about 445 feet from the place of worship uh, to the north property line, actually to the drainage parcels north property line. We're approximately 600 feet from this proposed building to the nearest dwelling. 
And as the rabbi actually mentioned, there's about a hundred foot swath of native, uh, not native, it may, be, it may be native, but of plant material that's uh, pretty thick uh, to the north end there that separates those two parcels. Mm -hmm. So again, this is, um, you know, staff in our office kind of worked through was uh, this code provision in white. So it's uh, the lots reduced by eminent domain uh, for any size or configuration below that's required by the applicable zoning may be developed subject to the following. So again, we, we meet A, and I think why staff is kind of towing the line on the denial or uh, recommendation is that we still have to meet the setback. Well, again, this is a one size fits all code requirement. Not every site is going to be the same. Not every site is going to have uh, similar setbacks. So like I show in the bottom here is um, all the districts except for there's some of the other rural districts are going to be, you know, 50 in the front, 40 in the back. You see some, uh, most of them are around 50 in the front and then, but only 20 foot rear setback. Again, this is a 200 feet worth of uh, total, uh, total setback. So the question I kept asking myself is if the code allows for a variance relief, from five acres to 2.7, almost half the property, and the code allows from 660 feet to 261 without a variance, then why would we not be able to get relief from 200 feet worth of, worth of uh, setback? So I just kept asking myself that as I was going through this. So um, we believe we should be able to, to request that. And that's why the variance process is there for hardships. These are the permitted uses. So you know, pretty much any of these other uses that are, that are shown here are going to have a building associated and would need the same, same variance relief. I won't go through these in detail. I know I've kind of touched on these, but we do have to have these as a, as a procedural uh, re requirement. But uh, special uh, circumstances and conditions that are procurable to this parcel of land that, were not, um, that are not applicable to other structures. So the special condition is obviously the DOT taking, the Palm Beach County taking, those two combined uh, severely reduces the property size. Special circumstances and conditions do not result from the actions of the applicant. We just went through those. Uh, those are from public agencies. Uh, granting the variance shall not confer upon the applicant any special privilege denied by the comp plan to other parcels of land. Um, again, so the eminent domain proceedings on the property have rendered the site very narrow. Uh, building envelope. And there are other properties, which I'll get into, that right around our area that have similar situation uh, that are in Horseshoe Acres. Uh, literal interpretation enforcement of the terms of provisions would deprive the applicant of rights commonly enjoyed. So that's what I want to show you now, is that there's, uh, in Horseshoe Acres, again, they're under the same AGR requirements. There's 18 lots within Horseshoe Acres, that's 50% of those lots in there, are one and a half to two and a half acres. So they're below the five acre threshold, right? Now, a lot of those homes and a lot of the subdivision of land happened prior to 73, which is the cutoff for a legal lot. So I'm not saying that they're not legal lots. They, they may be. Um, also, many of the homes on there do not meet the minimum 100-foot setback. Again, could have been built before the code. That's fine. But there are some vacant lots in here that, that are uh, going to have to build at some point, and they will have to meet that 100-foot setback. And I would hope that they get a similar consideration because, again, they were subdivided properly prior to 73, but they don't have the ability to meet that setback. And again, these setbacks are, are pretty stringent um, for this area. So again, very similar situation, similar um, compatible uh, property size, and we're not asking for anything different than what's, what's uh, in the same character of the neighborhood. So again, just finishing out the, the seven criteria, um, granting of the variance is the minimum. This is the minimum um, provided to, to make reasonable use of the land and provide a building that works for, for their purposes. Um, it is consistent with the purposes, goals of the comp plan and the code. Again, asking for that FAR only for that 2.7 acres and uh, granting the variance will not be injurious. Again, I think staff uh, agrees with that as well, that uh, it won't be injurious to any of the public uh, for a rear setback to a drainage parcel. With that, I uh, hope to answer any questions and uh, appreciate the time. Thank, Thank you. you. Staff. Any questions of the applicant? Well, staff's getting ready. No? I have some questions. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, is that the time now for questions yeah, of the applicant or do we do staff presentation then? okay well let's go ahead and do staff okay <laughs> okay
Okay, good morning, Wendy Hernandez, the Deputy Zoning Director. Um, I'll be presenting the Chabad uh, Center application. Uh, the site, as uh, Josh had already mentioned, is on the north side of Clintmore, um, east of Wagon Wheel. It has an ag reserve future land use and an ag reserve zoning, and the acreage is 2.77. And the request before the board is a reduction in the rear setback. 100 foot is required, and their proposal is 60 feet this is the uh, zoning map. Uh, the subject site was originally part of a larger track, um, in, and he had given some history as well. In April 20, 2002, the county acquired the northern half through eminent domain um, to establish roadway drainage, and as a result, the southern portion of the track was reduced in size. And through the eminent domain procedures, the property owner is compensated during those uh, presentations during that um, hearing process. Article 1G in the ULDC states that when a lot is developable, uh, initially requested variances for the reduction in lot size and depth are not required. Um, however, the same portion of the ULDC also states that setbacks have to be met. Uh, now with the AGR zoning district, I will point out um, in their presentation, they said that the Place of worship, um, again, is not part of this analysis, but a place of worship is not by right. It requires an administrative approval. They don't go directly to the building division um, for a use approval. It requires an administrative approval. I will also point out that in the AGR zoning district, a place of worship is not the only use that can go on this piece of property. Ownership. The current property owner purchased this property in 20, 2013. When they bought the property, they were aware that it was less than the size of an AGR district. They proceeded to move forward with that um, sale. The uh, property development regs in 2013 were a 100 foot front setback, a 100 foot rear setback, 80 foot side corner setback, and a 50 foot uh, side interior setback. Those setbacks have not changed. The county did not uh, make the person buy the property. They did it of their own volition um, and chose to buy the property. The current property owner owns the property to the west as well, which is the Randazzo School, um, approved for 500 elementary uh, students, as well as a 240 daycare um, and 26 queuing spaces. These are the two sites side by side. Um, the one in red is the subject of the subject variance. Uh, this is the proposed site plan and it is preliminary, um, but it is necessary as it relates to their request um, because they are proposing a 60 foot uh, reduced, uh, 60 foot setback rather than the required 100 foot setback. They are proposing a place of worship, which again um, is at their request um, and it is not subject to an a use approval by the Zoning Commission. It is an administrative use approval. Parking spaces 83 are proposed and their access is proposed from um, Clintmore Road. This approval has not been granted yet um, and is subject to a decision by the board um, for the variance. The Randazzo School, if it comes up during um, public comment, is approved. It was approved in 2006. It was a public hearing application and the board approved it. Uh, there is a final site plan approval, um, which incorporates two buildings for the, the school, um, roughly 500 students, 240 for the daycare, and an office space along with parking and queuing and uh, recreation areas for the students that attend the school. So the standards. The standards for variances apply for anybody that's coming before the board um, and staff is recommending um, denial on uh, six of the seven standards. And um, part of our analysis discusses um, that this is self-created. Um, they bought it. They bought the property. It was their choosing. They're choosing to do a use. They're choosing to do the building in that particular uh, dimension and, and design. Uh, there are other design options um, that they can meet. They can choose to have a different use on the property that may be better suited for this subject property. So there are other options uh, for this particular property owner. 
So we've received several contacts from the public, both in support um, and in opposition for the subject request, and staff finds that it doesn't meet the requirements of the variant standards, um, and therefore we recommend denial. Um, but if the board chooses to approve, um, we do have proposed conditions of approval. I don't know, if, Lisa, if you have anything else to add. Yeah, I would like to add something. So what makes this different th to the other items on the agenda is in large place because the property owner bought the property and the property owner is not the Habat. The property owner is the property owner that owns this school property, this school approval. And they owned this property much longer, the one in the, the Randazzo school. This is actually two lots. This is two five acre lots next to each other. And you can see on the site plan that they have future development. Um, this is actually two individual lots and a decision was made by the current property owner to buy the little red box to go next to its yellow box. Also, decisions were made on how to orient <coughs> the access into the yellow box, which is the Rendazzo School, for the access largely in the middle, well, a little more towards the, the west. And what will happen with that school configuration is that anyone coming from the west will do a U-turn on Clintmore for their children to queue up in those 26 stacking lane, you know, parking spaces, queuing spaces, not parking spaces, to get into that school. And there is the cross access proposed here. But again, if you look at the alignment of that, um, there's also an awkward entry into that site as well coming from the west. It might be able to be navigable, and I don't know if uh, land development or traffic would stop people coming in from the west, but you know this is decisions by the property owner on to sell off this 2.7 acre property to the Habad rather than incorporating or doing some other configuration with his existing two properties. And this is why compared to some of the other variances on the agenda where we have a property owner that has a zoning approval from 1989 and they're, you know, they're just trying to bring it up to current code, there's there is an opportunity for the current property owner to do a little bit of a different type of configuration between the two properties that could achieve the both uses in a manner that has improved connectivity. And that all, right now he's looking to sell off this 2.77 acre property to the contract purchaser, which is the Chabad, but right now it is owned by the same property owner. And that's something that I wanted to point out of why this is, was a challenge for us. This doesn't happen to be something that the property is owner owner has owned for years, the code has changed, this was always purchased subsequent to the purchase of the Rondazzo School. So I just wanted to point that out and thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, any questions of uh, the applicant or staff? Commissioner Grumman? questions for the applicant and staff, but I'd like to talk to the applicant first and then staff. Okay. So my first question is, my understanding is that this property is under contract to be purchased by the Chabad? Correct, yes. And I'm assuming that the contract is contingent upon this approval? Uh, it is. So when your clients entered into the contract to buy the land, they were aware of this potential issue with regards to the setback as good land use attorneys you probably advised them of that uh, right we we were generally aware and understood of how the property would have to go through the process understood that there were issues that have been discussed today with regard to eminent domain proceedings hardship and the need for a setback yes okay so so they were they were aware of that this was a potential problem we, we understood that, yeah. I, I do want to clarify one thing, if I can, uh, Commissioner Roman. The, the ownership, although there's an individual that is consistent between the two properties, the property that we have under contract is owned by an entity. That individual is part of that entity. The adjacent property is an individual. They, they are not owned by the same entities. I think that's very relevant to the board's consideration as well. So, so as part of the presentation that you made, it, it seems I'm, to I'm sorry, the, the, the mailing address for the tax bill is the same exact address. They might have different LLCs, but at the end of the day, if you look at the organization on Sunbiz, it's, it's essentially the decision making is behind. Understood, but they're, they're owned in different entities from a, from a corporate, owned, from a legal standpoint, they're, they're owned separately. Which both have the same tax mailing address. Sure, not going to argue with that. 
So the same individuals own the different LLCs that own the property? There, there is an individual that owns one property and there is an entity that owns the other. And Correct. who owns that entity? Uh, what's his name? Same, I don't... same person? Simon. Okay. So during your presentation, it seemed you seemed to indicate that, the, that somehow um, the issue of the prior um, um, uh, uh, dedications or eminent domain proceedings somehow gave basis to grant this 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 um, this potential variance how, how, how is it a pre-existing ver uh, pre-existing eminent domain proceeding or actions by the county or the Lake Worth drainage district which are all on the record how does that support your argument that somehow a variance would be given when all that stuff took place before your, your clients put it under contract I've been doing this a long time. If there's no, I, I don't know that I've seen a, a clearer instance of a hardship on a piece of property than this particular situation. I, I get pre-existing. But the hardship was created by the prior owner by agreeing to the eminent domain and allowing the easements on uh, it, right? Th no one agreed to an eminent domain. Eminent domain is a taking by a government agency. They compensated. They got money for it. So they got money for that, and now they want to sell the property, and they don't, as, as if that they didn't get money for the eminent domain that took portion of the property, right? Property was cut in half. The code says you can you, you don't need to meet any of these standards. You need to meet setbacks, and we're here to ask for a variance. If this property were 300 feet deep, we wouldn't be asking for a variance. If this property were five acres in size, we wouldn't be here asking for a variance. Okay, moving moving right along. The other argument that was made is that somehow the um, parcels that are within Horseshoe Acres um, that were that are potentially non-conforming that forms an argument <coughs> for, for for granting this variance. Sure. So those parcels are residential parcels. They're not. They're not. They're not. All of the parcels have the same zoning. Uh, it shows several of the criteria that, that we're not being given a special privilege. There are undersized, non-conforming parcels immediately adjacent to this one. They absolutely meet the variance criteria. Parcels. All those parcels to the rear are residential. They're all AGR. They could have the same uses yeah, on them that we could. Zoning is exactly the same. Land use is exactly the same. Um, in his pre presentation, well, let's go, let's go to the school. Is there any relationship between these entities and, and the entity that, that's seeking to purchase the Chabad and the, and the school? There, there is no relationship between this Chabad and the owners of the property or the property that has the school that's vested on it. But you're familiar with the background concerning the school, how that, that kind of got in place, put in place? The Randazzo school that's yeah. vested on the property has no affiliation with the Chabad, no. But that was approved in 2006, and the only reason why the approval is still in place is not that because of the fact of the emergency orders of the governor, and that sure. had, had that approval expired, a traffic study would have been required for, for, a, for a new, a new Commissioner, school? Commissioner, with all due respect, we're not here to talk about a school. We're here to talk a about a place of worship and one setback. Nothing that's before this board today has anything whatsoever to do with the school, to do with traffic, why is, to do with the use. Why is there a cross-connection between the properties? Because this county requires it. Okay. All right. Um, in his presentation, the rabbi indicated that um, this is going to be a house of worship, but he also referenced the fact that there would be studying taking place. Is there any intent to have some sort of a school component to the... to the? Not to this place of worship. What the rabbi was referencing was Talmudic studies, uh, you know, the manner in which they practice in their religion. And finally, you do acknowledge that the setback requirement is in place in within the ULDC and applicable to the property? It's sure, absolutely. There's a 100-foot setback on either side, and we're asking for a variance from the setback to the north to be reduced from 60 feet to 40 feet, which, by the way, if we were 300 feet in depth, we wouldn't need. We would be at the exact setback that we would but need. But the reason you're not 300 feet in depth is because the prior owner agreed to a eminent <clears throat> demand and got paid for it. No. The reason that we're not at 300 feet in depth is because the county came in and took property for a drainage parcel to the north of this which creates a clear hardship on this property so um, I have no further questions for the Thank applicant you. so staff for Lisa um, am I missing something here that the, the, the all of these eminent domain proceedings and and easements and Lake Worth drainage district that was all pre pre-existing prior to, to this application isn't that correct yes it's in the early 2000s the property owner uh, was at the time which is not the current property owner or the applicant was compensated, I believe, around $800,000 for the rear portion of the property by the county, and, uh, unless um, Olive would like to elaborate in any way on that. Yeah. 
So that is correct. Um, and it was actually, it didn't go to trial. It was um, Settle. pre-trial settlement for that 838000 So the property owner voluntarily agreed to it. It wasn't adjudicated. Correct. And it, finally, can, you, can someone tell me about uh, my understanding is that also the, that this was one, this both parcels were one were part of one greater piece of property. Was there some illegal subdivision or something that took place? So the parcels, is it one nineteen and one twenty, and then the parcels to where the school is, they were all for prior to nineteen ninety six. They all were one owner. They were never legally combined. Then around 1996, they sold a portion and created a legal subdivision, which generally created those three separate parcels that you see. And then the county purchased the drainage tract, the right-of-way tract. So there was, in 1996, an illegal subdivision. Okay. And one quick question for, for Lisa. So uh, am I correct in assuming that the the reason the, the school approval is still in place is due to the emergency order function of the of state statute, which can extended those approvals. How this received time extension since 2006 approval, I, I can't get into the details without researching. Right. But yeah, this has had an approval since 2006, and the there is the ability for to ask for time extensions. So this has been extended with an approved unbuilt approval since 2006. So in the event, let's say in 2017, those approvals for whatever reason expired, would, would there have been a requirement to do a traffic study to reapprove that or, or, or how does that how does that work? Because I know there's been there has Clintmore Road was a was a was a smaller roadway back back in the in the day. Isn't that true? Yeah, the, we have a section in the planning division called monitoring, and they monitor all the resolutions and timing and approvals, and they process what we call status reports to the Board of County Commissioner when an approval expires. Um, and again, I, if it had expired, it would have to come back through and go through a new approval process, because usually it was Bruce Thompson and he just retired. He would um, bring before the board this application has uh, expired and present to the board options. Sometimes the board rezones the property, which wouldn't happen here because it didn't have a rezoning in 2006, and sometimes the approval is revoked, but that hasn't happened on this property to date. And, and staff's recommendation for denial is based on the fact that the ULDC does still, in fact, require the setback requirements to be met, and that's countywide, right? That's that's for any property in this situation. For the variant, we're recommending denial due to the inability, in our opinion, to meet the standards for a variance. Got it. All right. Thank you. No further questions. Any other questions, staff of the applicant, before we open up this to public comment? Actually, I, I have a question. I, I want to say maybe a year ago, maybe even less, um, before us, and maybe it was the school, um, that came before us to rezone it for an assisted living facility. Is yes. that the same parcel? The school came 10 years ago for an assisted living facility, and that was before this board eight years ago. Yes, that was an extremely controversial request on the school site. Not, I can't, I can't remember if this particular 2.7 acre parcel was part of that application, but I do know that the Randazzo school site was before the board. Okay, and that, and that the public outcry was they did not want the assistant. What, what else could go on this parcel land? I know at one time, this goes back years ago, the post office was looking at it and um, that was a huge no. Yeah, the Ag Reserve uh, straight zoning district has more uses available than the ag reserve pud preserve areas it could do any agricultural non-residential use place of worship government services josh had a slide earlier um, it could do non-residential uses or it could have a residential use or any kind of agricultural operation it could do on the site and it could do the place of worship it just you know as josh presented with is constrained due to the setback issue for any use on the property I think I saw it could have a packing plant on it. <clears throat> on Josh's, on Josh's uh, yeah. packing plant was one of the uses. I think packing plant is allowed, but packing plant <clears throat> has some strict regulations. So, for other institutional uses, assembly, nonprofit, 
daycare limited, daycare general, government services, um, let's see, the place of worship, and uh, school. And as an example, earlier on the agenda, we had the, uh, Big Dreams. the Big Dreams Daycare, a building that is roughly 50 feet in depth, 100 feet wide. If you put the daycare on that property, it would meet the setbacks. And if they put a daycare mm -hmm. on that property, what about then, does that change the traffic? issue every use has different traffic correct okay commissioner yes um, I'd like the applicant to clarify how far is the nearest <clears throat> property owner to the back of the Chabad it's approximately 600 feet and you're looking for a 40 foot variant correct so you're impacting a drainage it's a budding uh, drainage parcel. That's correct. And and you did say on the traffic that it was minimal. Was it 137 trips? It's about 130 ADTs, average daily trips, and then in the peak, which is what they measure, is about six, uh, six trips per hour, in the peak. So it's going to generate minimal traffic. Very minimal, yes. Thank yes. you. Uh, I have a question for the applicant. <clears throat> You're 600 feet from the nearest residence, and the school, as I saw it, looked like it was maybe. Uh, do you know what that distance is? Looks like it was no more than a couple hundred feet. Yeah, I think Josh has it on one of the slides. One more. Sorry, Commissioner Beatty, could you just repeat that again? Yeah, I was just, I, I noticed you had, you're 600 feet from the nearest residence, but it looks like the school, the proposed school uh, is uh, less than, it's half that distance from the nearest resident. Yes. yes. Maybe 250, 300 from what I'm seeing. Correct. And we're asking for the variance to the same parcel that the school is only is 50 feet from we're going to be 60 feet from Correct. the same drainage parcel Correct. And, and Josh made another good point earlier if this drainage tract had either been taken in a different configuration or taken as an easement and not actually taken the property we also wouldn't be here today thank you so how does the school have less of a setback this, these, the setback on this, that particular is a side setback. It's a side, yeah. The, the one in the rear, the one, the, yeah, the one in the rear. Yeah. So the the red that's highlighted is a side setback. This particular property owner has a same side setback of 50 feet. It's just the the request that they're asking for is a rear setback, and even the school has a hundred foot rear setback, which is the north property line. So both north property lines have a hundred foot setback. So it's it's 50 feet on the side, and it is meeting a 50 foot side setback for the uh, place of worship or for that proposed structure. Um, it's the 100 foot that's in question. Okay, I see. I, I was looking at the lake as though uh, we're looking at a setback from another property, but okay. How, how wide is that drainage easement or? Water retention. The drainage parcel is about 450 feet in depth. Somewhere around there. Um, I have a question for staff. What percentage of eminent domain goes to roadway? And this may be a hard one. Roadways, drainage easements, et cetera, versus putting a, a structure on. So it. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. So it all depends on the drainage basin. So what the county does when roadway production looks at a project, they're going to look to see how much they need. So they're going to take what they need and they're going to try to make the least amount of impact. So based on how big that basin is for Clint Moore and whatever, whatever else ever other drainage is taken in, they're going to accommodate it in the smallest capacity area. Let me, let me rephrase that. Has there ever been an eminent domain to build a, a prison, a, a, a physical structure, a fire station, a police station, something of utilitarian I don't public know that need? Answer. So it's usually roads, open space, 
from engineering's drainage. perspective, yes, it's okay. typically for drainage or roads. Additional right of way right. for roads. Okay. So this is actually right of way. We consider this mm -hmm. to be part of our right of way. Okay. Thank you. I have one question. If this was taken for the widening of Clintmore Road, correct? That that's why the county purchased that was for Clintmore Road. So I don't know all the details, but it is to accommodate for the drainage for the roadway and whatever other. However, the basin analysis was made as far as drainage goes. So it's to accommodate for Clintmore Road, and then whatever, whatever other areas were draining into Clintmore Road. I just find it odd that it's in the back, and it wouldn't be right up on Clintmore Road. So I don't understand why it was done that way. Um, yeah, so, but they, at the time, they make that analysis, and they, they chose to do it that way. Um, I did mention earlier that there was, um, a subdivision of that land and um, that might be part of the reason as to why they chose that back piece versus the front piece which was part of that illegal subdivision. Okay. Well I would imagine that also that was done to provide that transition between whatever was going to be built in the residential area gave that nice big buffer right there. Yeah, I would that, think that would be the rational reason to put it there. And, yeah, and, and access. There's Sorry. no access. There would be no access if you had the uh, drainage in the front. You wouldn't be able to get to the property. And there was also quite a bit of documentation to that point in the county's file, a number of documents that we've received that kind of confirmed. And, and again, we weren't there. We don't know the specifics of it. But, but the developable nature of this southern parcel, given the taking, there's backup and documentation from various county representatives at the time of the taking that this property would still be developable yes there's a letter from the planning director at the time saying that this uh, the loss of that acreage wouldn't hinder the ability for the property to be developed with one unit at the time a place of worship was a class a approval at the board so a lot of the focus was on the permitted and DRO approvals um, and that's the documentation we have the planning director was you know this won't hinder your ability um, to develop residentially or agriculturally was the finding so Right, so the, in other words, develop the land following the rules. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? No, Staff for the applicant. Okay, we'll open this up to public comment. We'll read cards. Um, as um, Commissioner Pavlik reads your name, please, or do you want to do this part? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can use either, either podium, and uh, please state your name and address for the record so I wanted to just state that we have 10 cards that they do not wish to speak um, seven are opposed three are in support they do ask that their um, comments be um, put into the record so do I need to read them or can we just submit right submit. okay and then I have 18 cards that wish to speak do we want to give them the three minutes do we want to have a discussion about that 18 cards. 18 cards. Do we want to give three minutes or do we want to put it down to three, three minutes? Three minutes. Okay. All right. So we were just having a sidebar. You're uh, typically three minutes is allowed, but because we had so many cards, there's been times where you make an adjustment to that. But we are going to go ahead and give each person that is called up that wants to speak their three minutes. Um, I will apologize ahead of time. Um, phonics is not my strong suit, so I may massacre your name. I apologize. But as I do call you up, um, I'll call two people, go to either podium. For the record, you need to state your name and your address. So first, it looks like Rod Sheldon and Jake Shalom. Shal sh sorry. <laughs> Good morning. Rod Sheldon, 5818 Windsor Terrace, Boca Raton. I'm here um, to state my um, support for the Chabad. And I really, um, what I don't understand is in looking at the uh, drainage area, how, from a practical standpoint, this request for the setback really has any impact. And I, I don't know if, if somebody uh, from staff could answer that um, or whomever, but that's my question. Because really, everything else about this seems to me to be a little political. And I really think that uh, it's really not the time or place for that. I think that 
this is a, a use that's approved, as we all know, and I think that this is a use that, um, personally, living in the community, um, I support uh, with great enthusiasm. And, you know, if push came to shove and the building had to be built as a bowling alley style um, synagogue, you know, I would support getting an incredibly talented architect to figure out how to make that happen. But frankly, I think that um, there's just no practical purpose for um, denying um, the request. So if somebody from staff could answer that question, I'd really appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Is Jake Shulm Shulman? Yep. yep, okay. Hello, my name is Jake Shulman. I've lived in Boca Raton for 26 years. I've grown up in Woodfield Country Club, and now I reside around the corner in Boca West. I believe now, more than ever, the presence of a Chabad is not only necessary, but imperative for the spiritual well-being of our fellow Jewish residents. During the global pandemic, it's brought a mass migration of Jewish people down to South Florida, and now there's 100,000 Jewish people living in Boca Raton. Chabad is a renowned worldwide for its inclusive and welcoming approach to Judaism. It provides a space where people of all backgrounds can come together to celebrate and practice their faith in a warm and inviting environment. By establishing a Chabad in Boca Raton, we will be creating a hub for Jewish life fostering a sense of unity and ensuring that our community remains connected to the rich heritage. Chabad is a great place for people of all religions, and this small variance would help bring people together in a neighborhood where there's a huge uh, diversity of people and a large population of Jewish people. So I'm very much in uh, favor and support of this uh, variance. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please, 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 no comments or clapping. Keep the audience quiet, please, um, and just let the people Mr. come up Chair, and speak. Do we, do we want to, like, have both microphones? Yes, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. That was what we had originally said. But um, So, yes, we'd like one person to go to one uh, podium, the other to go to the other. So, Norman uh, Oper and Nicole Kaplan, please. Can I yield to John Chen? No, no, no. Hi, my name is Nicole Kaplan. I live at 6483 Enclave Way in Boca Raton. Um, I'm here today to sort of speak in a triple role. First, as a very close neighbor of the land for over 10 years. Second, as a real estate attorney, not for this case, but more in general. And third, as a supporter of the Chabad plan. So as a neighbor, a green space is nice. I think a lot of this uh, conflict is that people love this green space. It's been around forever. I get it. It's nice to pass a green space, but realistically, something's going to get built there eventually. Um, but if we want to keep something there, it's going to be small, aesthetically pleasing, and very low density. Um, as a real estate attorney, this land has already been approved for a house of worship or is a, an administrative approval. Uh, variance makes practical sense. It creates a more aesthetically pleasing building than a little bowling alley that still could be built but it will just look awful from the outside. It won't really make any sense from the inside if it ever wants to get sold or changed. It doesn't really work so well. Mm. Uh, from a retail or other use, any other use, a mulching, a chipping center, those were some of the uses that could have been done. But do we really need an eyesore on Clintmore Road? Do we really need another CVS on Clintmore Road? No, this is very low density, very low use. And finally, as a member of Chabad, We've celebrated holidays and occasions with the Galkin family and local families, but we need a permanent home base, somewhere we can all congregate. Um, in the past few years, hundreds of young families in the Oaks, in Boca Bridges, in Seven Bridges, they've all moved to Boca. There's a need for community now more than ever. And if this land is going to be built on, which eventually it will be one day, we don't know what it is, I'd rather have it doing good deeds than a mulching center. So I know emotions are running high these days, I don't think this has anything to do with religious uses. I think this has to do with traffic uses. And I get it. But I'm worried that opposing this variance is just a crowbar to try to stop a different piece of land, a different proposal that is not on the agenda today. It won't change the, that the building might be built. It will just be an ugly building eventually. So we're shooting ourselves in the foot if we deny this variance. 
It's a small, it's a practical variance. It will not have any impact on the outside of for Horseshoe Acres as your staff has approved. And as last note, over 2,000 years ago, Rabbi Hillel commanded us, do not separate yourself from the community. That message still rings true today. I ask you to approve this variance to make the land useful to the community. It's a small parcel of land, but it's a practical variance that we can get through, and it can provide a world of benefits for families for years to come. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please, no more clapping. Please, we'll ask you to stand outside until we call you back in. We'd like order, please. Um, and I'm sorry, Norman, were you going to come up? Because I'd like one, when I called two names, I'd like both people to be. Linguish. You're, you're linguish, okay. Um, Richard Salter and uh, Adrian Mosbera. And if. Do you, do you wish to speak or not speak? Not here. Who? Oh, no, so he relinquished, but, um, so I'm sorry, sir, what is your name? Richard Salter. Okay, and then is uh, Adrian Mosbury uh, available to come to the other podium? Okay. No? Okay, okay I'm going to call another person that I assume they're not what here. Adrian Mosbera. And, and, oh, I'm sorry, it looked like an N. Mosbera, Mosberg, yes, please, I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, hi. Um, my name is Richard Salter. I live in Horseshoe Acres, um, uh, um, <clears throat> one property down from the site, and um, or two properties down from this site, one property down from where the school is going to be. Um, basically, um, the re I think the idea that um, this variance is going to create a precedent that's going to affect all of us in Horseshoe Acres, including the eight, eight acre or 10 acre lot with the school may not be built and something else would come in. That precedent of having a setback that's less than um, 100 feet is something that's going to allow all these five acre and even the two and a half acre lots to get redeveloped and further developed with, with higher density and we're already getting under barrage for people wanting to buy our properties to build big giant things including um, all kinds of things have been proposed and done. This precedent, uh, so it's not about this particular set setback, but it's the setback precedent itself is going to have a huge effect on all of us in Horseshoe Acres. Uh, in our own properties, as, as they get sold, what could come in? And, and, and if the school doesn't get built, what could happen there? So I think it's an issue of precedent, and it's an issue that um, the uh, is specific to this uh, eminent domain that it shall, it shall meet the zoning setback requirements and the precedent uh, that this would set by uh, varying that. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Sir. Go ahead, Andrew. Sorry. Hi. My name is Andrew Mossberg, and I'm the president of Long Lake Estates, the development that's directly across Clintmore Road from the proposed development. I applaud the commission staff on their recommendation to deny the variance. They are professionals and deal with these issues and are able to analyze and understand the facts. The problem I have with the planned development is that from Jog Road to Lyons Road on Clintmore Road, is made up of only residential communities. Although the hearing is about the setback variance, we need to look at the whole picture of the Chabad and the school as they are both connected, and it is our belief that if the variance is denied, the Chabad will not be built, and no Chabad, no school. If this is built, then Clintmore's Road traffic will be a disaster, and security and the placement of a security checkpoint has not even been addressed. We hope you deny the variance. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Next, Ralph De La Vega and Nahi Khan. I requested not to speak. I'm sorry. Oh, it doesn't, I don't see a uh, check, but you don't have to speak if you didn't want to. It'll thank just be in the record. Yes, thank you. So then can I also have Eric uh, Newman up to the other podium? Go ahead. 
Okay, uh, good. good morning, Commissioners. Uh, my name is uh, Ralph De La Vega, and I live in La Rivage. La Rivage, it's at the corner of Clintmore Road and Lyons Road in the Ag Reserve. We are the, as far as I know, one of the few developments in the Agricultural Reserve that have an 80-20 split. 80% 80 of the land of those 40 acres that make up La Rivage is a preservation area. The 18 homes that reside on the 20% is where I live. I live at 17155 Avenue Le Rivage. Before I bought the property at Le Rivage, one of the things that attracted me to that property is the zoning, the low density, and all the criteria, including the setback, because in addition to the, the horseshoe acres, we at Le Rivage have requirements for setback so that we have a clear view of the beautiful present preservation area in our in our properties. We think by granting variances to adjacent properties, you endanger our own property by future variances. We think that the owners of this property that are being questioned knew, just like I knew before I moved into La Rivage, what the criteria was for zoning, for setbacks, and for everything else. And I'm here to tell you that we're very supportive of the staff decision to deny the requested variance. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Eric Newman. I live at 17731 Lake Azure Way, Boca Raton, Florida, 33496. I've had the privilege of living in Boca Raton for about 18 years now. And for the past four years, my family and I have lived in the Oaks community, which is just down the road from the subject property. I've been affiliated with the Chabad organization since college. Um, Later on in life, both of my older children attended religious school and were bar mitzvahed with Chabad. Chabad has always been a very valuable source of support and guidance in our lives. I've driven past this empty lot several times a day, wondering if it would ever be built into something useful, day in and day out for all of the years I've lived in the Oaks. We are thrilled by the prospect of a new Chabad synagogue opening within walking distance of our home. I'm certain that it would be a special place for our community to connect, learn, and worship together, which may be more critical today than ever before. I respectfully request that you approve Chabad's application. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please, no please, clapping. Please. Is Aaron, um, Aaron Golfin? could come up I'm sorry oh, okay all right and then um, Peter Sachs and then uh, on the other podium if I could have Zachary it looks like M-A-R-E-D or E-S -S. okay Good morning. Uh, it's my pleasure to address this honorable commission. My name is Peter Sachs. I live in Horseshoe Acres, and I'm speaking on behalf of three communities, uh, Horseshoe Acres, Long Lake Estates, and La Ravage. Uh, the code has standards for considering a variance. There are seven criteria. Uh, staff found five of those criteria were not met by the applicant's justification statement. The applicant cited the one criteria where the staff said they were not a factor. However, ha here is the most important factor. <clears throat> Will the variance be consistent with the purposes, goals, objectives, and policies of the plan in this code? The applicant did not even respond to that. So of the seven factors, six are not complied with. We urge you to uh, follow your staff. They're professionals. They deal with this. They've made a sound recommendation after careful study. Uh, this variance is self-imposed. Uh, the applicant knew exactly what they were getting into. Uh, they're under contract. Uh, they have an opportunity to uh, change it or do something else. Uh, they knew about the setback requirement. They can redesign this property if they choose to. Eminent domain is not relevant under the code. Under the code, setback requirements remain in effect if there is an eminent domain taking. And here the 
uh, predecessor in interest was paid $806,000. There's an alternative option available. The same property owner, Ron Simon, who has brought us all here, in fact, by the way they've handled this property, owns the property to the west. These properties can be combined. The kebab could be bigger and better if, if he would level with everyone. The plan for the property west is school, as you know. There's a cross connection. If you look at the current plans, the cross connection doesn't fit. It's not in the same spot. It's not been planned out carefully. There's some other issues that people have touched upon. There's never been a public hearing on either property for almost 20 years. The reason we're here is this is the first opportunity we can present our uh, position to you, uh, actually the second, because we, we were here several years ago, an application for the uh, nursing home and memory center. And when we get there, we have to consider health, safety, and welfare issues. Not only traffic, but safety for the applicant and the congregants, and safety for the neighbors. That has not even been considered by the applicant as yet. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Zachary Marins. I live at 18279 Long Lake Drive, Boca Raton, Florida. I am a homeowner in Long Lake Estates, right across the road from the proposed Chabad House of Worship. I live there with my wife, our three young children, ages 11, 8, and 5. My two boys are students at Donna Klein Jewish Academy, and my daughter is a student at Zale JCC, both of which are in West Boca, not far from our home and the proposed Chabad. There is an incredible community here, which we have come to know through our neighbors and our children's schools. This community, many of which are here today in support of this project, wants and needs this Chabad house of worship at its currently proposed location. What is Chabad? Chabad stands for wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. These are exactly the philosophical qualities we want in our community and neighborhood, as close by as we can get it. Our hope is for our children to grow up creating so many wonderful memories at the Chabad House of Worship, celebrating milestone Jewish events in their lives. Our hope is for our community to have a Chabad House of Worship, to come together to practice and celebrate our shared tradition and rituals. This will be a place of community, support, and spirituality. So why must it be in this location and not somewhere else? The proposed location is ideal for the surrounding community to easily travel by foot and is uniquely situated around many residential communities whose residents want this project. Having a house of worship close by is an essential need for our community. The proposed location is right where we want it. For these reasons, I implore the zoning board to grant the one variance being requested so that our incredible community and neighborhood can continue to grow and flourish for many years to come. Thank you for your time today. Thank you. Next up, please, please, I know you're excited, but I've asked you guys, please stop clapping or making comments in the audience. Let the people come up, and then let's just go through the process. I'd like Mark Bolander to come up and Dan Nisanoff. Good morning, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak before this honorable board on this very, very important topic. Uh, being a resident of Woodfield Country Club, residing at 6090 Northwest 42nd Way um, in Woodfield for the past 11 years, personally, I've seen a major shift in demographics within our own community, meaning that we're old and this whole community in Woodfield is becoming extremely young. That means there's a lot of small children, families, that have an incredible need to have a house of worship within a normal amount of a distance that the agricultural preserve allows. And also in addition, to have a place to send our children and myself in the future, God willing, 
my grandchildren to be able to attend where there is waiting lists right now in adjacent schools because of the demographic the demographic the shift of population from the north to the south so i respectfully support this project and ho i'm a former founder of a chabad up in long island i have stood before a board similar like this with the same type of objections and the board approved the pro the the to the location, which happens to be in Dix Hills, Long Island, Rabbi Sachs, and it has brought nothing, nothing but the community together up north, and I have no doubt in my mind this particular project and Rabbi Grobin and my neighbors and all of our communities surrounding, at the end of the day, if this respectable zoning board uh, puts a yes vote to allow this variance. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, before, you, before you call the next one, I, I apologize. I just received information that uh, Mr. Sachs submitted some documentation that he is representing other, other organizations. So in doing so, he's allowed an additional two more minutes, uh, assuming Mr. Sachs wants those additional two minutes. Yes, please. I'm sorry. What other organizations does Mr. Sachs represent? Sure, he'll tell us. Um, I'll, I'll look to staff. We received um, correspondence, I believe. Yes, he submitted documentation. He's representing, I believe, three HOAs. He could speak to that. Thank you. I started to discuss sec secondary issues. Excuse me, Mr. Sachs. Just for the record, if you could indicate who you are speaking on behalf of. I'm speaking on behalf of Long Lake Estates, La Ravage, and several of the Horseshoe Acres owners otherwise known as the Clinton Moore Coalition. Okay. All right. Thank you. Sorry for the misunderstanding. Okay. Uh, other issues. <clears throat> you always should consider health, safety, and welfare. We have an enormous traffic problem there, and this is not going to make it any better. We see it every day at the Calusa School down, down the road. Why is it coming up now? It's coming up now because we have not had an opportunity in almost 20 years to present our position at any public forum. The school was approved in 2006. The traffic report it's relying upon was done in 2007. It's really irrelevant at this point. We're also concerned about the safety of the area. Uh, we uh, see what's going on at the other synagogues in Kabads. They deal with security. They have a plan. Uh, we don't see it here because it hasn't been prepared. The Woodfield entrance by the traffic light where the congregants would cross the road is 1,500 feet from the property. Five football fields. <clears throat> this is not a, a neighborhood like Montoya Circle where you walk uh, to the uh, synagogue. This is the suburban tier on the east side of term, term, the turnpike. It's a, it's a narrow sidewalk with no shade, and it's not a walkable area. You don't see people walking there. Finally, we've had an issue with transparency here. Not so much by the applicant, more by the property owner. The property owner, the applicant, the applicant's professionals did not and failed to meet with any of our communities beforehand. These things were not discussed until the last several days and today. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, Dan uh, Nisanoff, I don't know. I called him once. I don't know if he's in. If I'm, it's, It looks like N-A-S-S-A-N-O-F-F. -F. And uh, Eric Nathanson. That's the third one. Yeah. yeah, and if Dan is not available, then Linda... B E B E H M O I R A S. Ladies first, first. You go first. Can you go first? <laughs> <laughs> okay. My name is Eric Nathanson. I reside at 8809 Twin Lake Drive. Um, my wife, four children, been living here for 14 years. Um, I'm not really good at speeches, so I'll just kind of <clears throat> give my bullet point of um, facts or comments. Um, what really, really surprised me was right before this, um, this item came up, there, were, there was 12 variances that were just given to a, um, 
for-profit organization for type 2 variances. Here we're asking for one type 2 variance. And everybody, I'm not going to point fingers, has brought up schools, <clears throat> things that have nothing to do with this project, and it's just, it's, it just doesn't make any sense. We're asking for a setback to a lake. The school, which we're not talking about, is a couple hundred feet behind someone's house. We shouldn't be here talking about that. We're talking about a setback from a lake for 40 feet to build a temple to face east so we can pray properly. The Alliance for the Coalition of Associations is representing not Long Lake Estates, but the Board of Long Lake Estates. Like I said, I reside there for 14 years. I have multiple homes in Long Lake Estates. I'm a member in Woodfield Country Club. I'm a member of St. Andrew's Country Club all for the last 10 years. It's only an asset to have a Chabad built in the neighborhood for people to walk to. And all these coalitions and associations that are against this haven't talked to any of the residents. They had board meetings without discussions of any of the community members before the decision was made to go against it. Other associations, which were mentioned earlier, which represent over 2,000 residents that are not here in opposition, didn't want to have anything to do with the coalition because of what is going on with the, with the religious tone of what's going on with this project. And if people are for and against and don't come to this meeting, I think they sh should still be heard because by them not belonging to the coalition on this issue is the reason why they didn't want to have their name associated with what, what other people are trying to do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Linda Bermorris. My address is 4290 mm -hmm. Northwest 66 Place. Thank you to the Planning and Zoning Committee and to the appointed members of our county commissioners for providing us the opportunity to be here today. And thank you for your service. I have been a resident of Woodfield Country Club Kensington subdivision for 26 years. Kensington is the community closest to the proposed Chabad Chai on Clipmore Road. I heard the name John Channing, one of the red shirts, when I walked in. Coincidentally, Mr. Channing built the three Woodfield communities closest to the proposed lot, Kensington, Somerset, and Mayfair. Funny how life works, that the man who built the three beautiful communities is now trying to prevent a true community. We moved into Woodfield Country Club in 1997 when I was pregnant with my older son. My husband, Ralph, served as president of the Kensington HOA for 18 years. I need to add that I do represent another organization, and maybe I should get some extra time because I talk a lot. I would like to add I'm a member of the media. I'm the publisher, founder, and CEO of the Boca Raton Observer magazine, an upscale local lifestyle magazine that has the largest mail circulation in Palm Beach County. I founded my publication 20 years ago, and I'm very familiar with community, all different ones. My family of four has been living in this house since our existence as a family. I raised my two children there. I sent them to Donna Klein Jewish Academy at the Jewish Federation of South Palm Beach campus from K to 12, kindergarten to 12th grade. And I made that left at Woodfield's Clintmore Gate and passed the said parcel multiple times a day for 15 years of my life. I've been an active member of B'nai Torah Congregation for 26 years, served on their board of trustees. B'nai Torah is located located on the most southern point of our county, just north of the county line. My family has been very active there. I'm involved in several philanthropic organizations in South Palm Beach County. I'm a passionate Latin Jewish woman, a business owner, an active resident, a community leader, an observant Jew, and a Zionist. I go to synagogue more often than most Boca Raton women, typically every Shabbat and two or three times a week for morning prayers. I've known the Goppins for years. I first met Rabbi Goppin when he came to my office on Con Congress Avenue and engage my staff and help my family through some very difficult times. Like most of us here, my home is my sanctuary. I understand how the residents with the red shirts um, feel. As Mr. Sachs eloquently pointed out, that we live in a residential area. Our homes are where we relax and spend time with our families. We all have busy lives. The bottom line here is that Rabbi Goppin and Chabad has created a community within our community. It's beautiful and heartwarming to see what has gone on. He has brought our community together. I raise my children in this community and I'm meeting many new families here who are here to grow their families. This next generation deserves the 
that we as a community constantly improve. I personally Thank feel. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Can I file for extra time? You need to do that beforehand, like uh -oh. Mr. Sachs did. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have uh, Prava Pravin, the gentleman I uh, called up earlier, and then we have John Channing. Uh, good morning, Commission. How are you doing? My name is Pravin Naniakara. Uh, I reside at 8345 Clinmore Road. If you look at the map, it's the two adjacent five-acre lots right next to the big yellow block, which is next to the, the red block. Um, so I'm definitely, uh, I'm definitely in the middle of this thing. I'm right next to all the development and proposed variances and what's going on. Uh, I remember, you know, actually a couple years ago, I was here in the same exact spot, uh, I think at the same podium too, uh, battling against the ALF that was, the, that was proposed at the time. I just feel that um, the applicant and the owner of both those properties uh, doesn't have or hasn't ta really talked to the communities uh, and seen what they think would work here. I think the variance is a set of rules that everyone should adhere by. Um, I know the applicant was trying to compare single family residences in <coughs> Horseshoe Acres to a house of worship, which that's comparing apples and oranges. It really makes absolutely no sense, right? They say that it should be a yes because it's already passed by zoning, but as, as said by staff before, the administrator, it still needs an administrative use approval. I can echo, I'm not gonna talk the whole time because most of the people, uh, especially Peter Sachs, Richard Salter, uh, Clintmore Coalition have already echoed uh, you know, what, I've, what I've been thinking. And I think that we should all have to adhere by the setbacks. There is no reason for a change for this at this time. I don't think that the applicant has proved to us, the rest of the community, that there is a need for this at this time and why the setback should be changed. If they could come up with some tangible evidence and prove and say, yes, this is exactly what we need. This is the reason why. They, have, they, they, they talk about community. They said 100,000 people have come you know, in, in Boca right now, right? The community are all 100,000 going to come to this Shabbat? You talk about traffic and safety. If you have been down Clintmore Road in this area, you already know the traffic is bad. People drive fast. That's why they put a stoplight at Woodfield Country Club, yeah, at, 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 at that exit. Now think about people walking and crossing that street on Saturday, what, twice, three times a week? Something's going to happen, unfortunately, and it'll be an accident. I don't think they have the best interest in the safety of their people when they're going ahead and proposing an institution like this in this location. I think it's a great idea, the institution. I, they brought up a lot of really good points, depression, bringing people you know, back from COVID, things like this. And it, it, it's, you know, I applaud them for that. I just think the location really doesn't make sense at this time. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, zoning Commission members, my name is uh, John Channing and uh, I've been a resident of Long Lake Estates for over 30 years. I've been a real estate developer for over 45 years in South Florida. Recently, uh, we came before your board on August the 3rd, and I want to thank you for approving the first commerce project, uh, and that was on Boynton Beach Boulevard between uh, the Turnpike and Acme Dairy Road. With my partner, Malcolm Butters, we worked for two years with Cobra and Bark and we came up with a concept that neighboring com communities supported. And that's, and that's the way things should be done. Where you work together with neighboring communities and you come up with a concept, everybody's on the same page. I've done that my whole career. And this is the first time in all my business years that this has never happened. That the applicant or the planner did not reach out to our communities that are affected by the potential development. The applicant's game plan was getting a school administratively approved on one piece and then go get this place of worship approved on the other piece. It's very frustrating for us not to have any information or input on development that can potentially impact our communities. We strongly support the recommendation of denial by staff. Variances are not given when the problems are self-imposed by the applicant. The prior owner at the time of the taking was compensated for the reduction in size of the property 
and the applicant knew that their design did not fit on two and a half acres. The Chabad has contracts and affiliated companies' names for the entire site. They have the ability to use more of the land and not play a shell game of getting approvals and later coming back to the county and try to put it together. The site plan you are reviewing shows a future cross connection to the school. However, this, this connection doesn't work with the existing school plan. It runs right into a building. So both sites are gonna have to be redesigned in the future if this is approved. Furthermore, there have not been any traffic studies done since 2004, so there are no counts regarding how a school approved for 740 students and a place of worship handle the traffic that will be generated. So that doesn't back up to the, to, the, the two lanes on Clintmore Road. What about right turn lanes, stacking lanes, studies of internal queuing, U-turns? What about fire? Have they signed off on plans? The county needs to do a traffic study of local impact of these projects and how they're going to affect Long Lake Estates and Horseshoe Acres. Our communities need to have a voice and information Thank going you. forward. Thank you. Thank you. That is all the uh, comments um, that I have. Okay. If I may, um, it was discussed about the Allegro senior living application. The current property owner of both the yellow and the red site submitted for a future land use amendment and rezoning for those two properties together in 2016. And the, the subject site in red was proposed to be water retention in that application. The three story, well initially it was five stories and it was dropped down to three stories on the bulk of the yellow property. Um, was proposed to have 200,000 square feet of a CLF type three with over 200 beds. And in those applications, the property owner proposed that the access be along the property line of the yellow and the red line because in, you know, that was to address the traffic that was erased by uh, using these properties as a CLF use. So the property owner it did previously proposed to develop these two properties together. That was withdrawn prior to the transmittal hearing in 2018 at the Board of County Commissioners, um, but it was recommended for denial by the Planning Commission. But, and then, you know, we haven't seen, other than the modifications to the school application in yellow and this application, we haven't seen applications on this site since 2018. Okay, thank you. Um, at this time, any rebuttal? Yes, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, so Scott and I just had a couple points that we wanted to make um, in kind of gathering some of that info. Um, so again, you know, we don't, we're not associated with the school. The school is approved. It's on the books, but it's been there since, on the books since 2006. We don't know if they're going to build. We, so how, how can we think, because I think there were some comments on, well, you can just be part of them and do a bigger, bigger Chabad. Well, then we heard about traffic. So I, I don't think the point is we want to do a bigger Chabad. What we have available is this 2.7 acres. That's where what we have available to purchase and what we <coughs> hope to build on. Um, we, we have nothing to do with the school. The traffic, all that stuff, it sounds like this is a platform from, a, from the first time they're able to get to a board voice uh, and, and it has nothing to do with our application. We're simply asking for a setback to the drainage parcel. Um, to say it's, it's not self-imposed, right? I know we're building on a greenfield site. Every greenfield site that's come before the zoning commission that has a variance has the same issue. I mean, they're, they're, build, they're proposing to build something. And sometimes there are impediments to the site, you know, utilities going through the site or takings, these things, that's exactly what we have today. Um, again, going back to health, safety and welfare in the discussion about traffic, you know, we, the site plan is only for informational purposes only at this point in the process. All, all we have to submit that for is just to make sure that we can kind of see where the parking's gonna go, can they meet that? So when it does come in off the board for the DRO site plan, because it is a permitted use that takes into account that the traffic for those permitted uses is already covered for on Clintmore. We're not going for a traffic approval on that. It's, it's, it's into the mix knowing that it's a permitted use uh, subject to DRO. So again, traffic is not of concern here. And we show that with the, with the traffic numbers. Uh, we do meet comp, comp plan and code other than this one finite item, which is the setback. Um, 
and again, the, the talk about the Horseshoe Acres lots, the, the setback is not use specific. The setback is zoning specific, and that's why we say those, some of those lots may have issues in the future, and I hope that they get the same consideration that I hope we get today, is that they can come in, because a 100 by 100 foot setback on those smaller lots is gonna be difficult to build a home. Um, so again, not use specific, but zoning specific. So I'll turn it over to Scott. Thanks, Josh. Um, j just two quick legal points, uh, and I think everyone on this board knows this, but variances are site specific. They do not set any kind of precedent. I know that there were some comments that came out in that regard. It's very important for this board to understand and to the points that Josh just made. We are asking for one very small, minimal variance that is not self-created, is not going to establish any, uh, any type of precedent. However, with one exception, and, and I think this board about a year ago dealt with an issue on another Chabad in Century Village, dealt with issues under federal and state religious freedom protections with RELUPA and things of that nature. The concern, and Josh pointed this out in his presentation and otherwise, if there are any other variances granted in this county in the AGR, and this is denied, it creates a, a, a form of discrimination against this religious institution. I think you heard a lot here about concerns, about bias, things of that nature, and under those federal and state legal standards, th that's a potential issue as well. So just kind of putting it out there, I think we very clearly established and met the criteria for a variance under the ULDC, uh, established all the components associated with that, um, but just kind of wanted to put that out there for the board's consideration as well. Mr. All right, Chair, thank you. I may respond to that. Um, much as Mr. Backman mentioned that variances under the code are unique and not site specific and don't set precedence, under federal protections, each scenario is um, distinguishable from the other. Uh, there is no precedent being created if there is no um, there's no guarantee that something uh, denying this would would be discriminatory or create a precedent. I just wanted to make it clear that those are also um, very case-by-case -case kind of determinations. So. Okay, thank you. Any final rebuttal from staff? Yes, so um, with regards to the use approval, uh, with any use approval, whether it's through building permit or through an administrative or public hearing, traffic is analyzed, a statement is required. Um, so it isn't just by right because it's an administrative approval and analysis is done. Um, with regards to setbacks, um, where he had mentioned the residential neighborhood, residential have additional uh, allowances in the code when you have a residential use on a residential lot um, where they, if it's non-conforming, legally non-conforming, they get percentage setbacks and reductions. Um, so that same standard isn't applied to non-residential uses. And then again, we have um, several standards in the code that we have to analyze uh, for variances specifically. And staff just reiterates that um, the applicant bought the property knowing that it was AGR when they bought the property. It was the required setbacks have not changed. Um, the Article One requirement to require to meet setbacks if the site was subject to eminent domain was still in place. Um, and so therefore we stand beside our recommendation that we have. Okay. And one thing I'd like to add is the property owner is not the Chabad. At, at the end of the day, the property owner is not the Chabad. And this is a variance requested for property that's currently owned by a property owner. They bought it in 20, 13 at a greatly reduced price. The prior property owner to this property owner was given over $800,000 for the use of the back of the property. And those are just, you know, staff is recommending denial because of the variance conditions. It's not from our perspective about the Chabad. Okay, thank you. All right, I'll bring it to the board. So uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, I'll, I guess I'll start. So, um, <coughs> So as a, as a member of this board, I'm, I'm obligated to, to follow the rules and the law, and that's, that includes the ULDC. Under the ULDC, there are certain requirements in order for you to meet a variance request. Because people want something, because of COVID, because of the humanistic appeal and benefits that Chabad brings, which, which I've supported other Chabads in the past, as you might know, um, in East Boca. Um, that's not the standard to grant a variance. The standard to grant a variance is what's in the ULDC. So um, I have not heard any 
substantial competent testimony of any kind today which would address the specific issue within the ULDC of the seven points, five of which were not met, in order to approve the variance. And um, it, so in, 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 in that regard, um, I'm compelled to follow the recommendation of staff, most particularly because the property owner, which doesn't really, uh, the, the property owner who owns the property now knew full well that this was going to be an issue that came up. And um, the property is under contract. Chabad doesn't have to close on it. They can, they can, they can make a better deal, or they could, they could design a better building that would actually meet the code. So that's my position on this. No matter how um, much people want something or need something, you know, we have to follow the rules up here. And and I can tell you for absolute certainty, notwithstanding Mr. Backman's veiled threat of litigation, which I do not appreciate at all. Um, I can tell you that our responsibility is to follow the rules and the, and the law and to make the right decision accordingly. So that's the reason why I'm going to support staff and vote against this variance is because it doesn't meet the requirements on the ULDC, no matter how much I would want to vote in its, in its favor. Thank you. Okay. No. <laughs> Areas are awfully quiet. Um, I have gone back and forth on this issue, um, for for it, against it. Um, I sit here and I do remember when we had the assisted living and everybody was outraged. They didn't want it. When the post office wanted to use that land, they, um, everybody was outraged, didn't want it, and um, I, I think uh, Chabad w would be a a good use, especially when it comes to traffic. Um, <clears throat> but after listening to, to both sides today, and I've got to say that how many times, numerous times, we asked not to clap, not to make comments, um, we still had that after almost every single speaker. And from sitting up here, and I'm sitting here and I'm thinking that you're not following the rules, which then goes to the variance. If the variance is granted, are you going to follow the rules? And just coming in for a variance is, that in itself is not following the rules. So that's my two cents on this application. I know you're dying to say something, Commissioner Beatty. Well, Scott addressed one of my issues, the, the precedent issue. I mean, uh, variances are site specific, so that's not an issue. Um, you know, I believe that uh, the eminent domain is the reason this issue is here. It forced this issue to be here. That 60 foot, it really is not that developable of a project when you're, you know, trying to create a uh, something that's aesthetically pleasing for that neighborhood. Um, as far as the access goes, I think maybe they could work something out with the neighbor to access the property where that medium cut is. Maybe they could find come to some agreement on that or modify that medium to uh, work for their access. And the, pro the project's going to go through the DRO site plan approval process. It's going to be reviewed, reviewed, reviewed again. and. And uh, so, uh, truthfully, I, I have no issue with giving them uh, the variance. I, I, I believe that it does meet the criteria. And uh, I'm prepared to make a motion that uh, we approve item 8A to allow a reduction in lot size, lot depth, and rear setback on 2.77 acres in that the project the variance does meet article 2b7e6 standards a through f Ask commissioner I that motion um i think we need a revised motion to take out the lot size and lot depth it's just on the rear setback okay then uh minus the lot size and lot depth okay we have a motion we have a second i second so we've got a motion by Commissioner Beatty, seconded by Commissioner Reeves. 
Um, any further discussion? I guess I imagine this is going to be a split vote. Well, I mean, I could make a counter motion to deny. Well, not yet. So, uh, so there's a motion on the on the table okay, first. Yeah, let's vote on the motion. You got to take first. care of that. Actually, oh, you actually can. So you actually can make a counter motion. It's to uh, according to the Roberts rules, you can do a substitute motion. Um, How many times? There can be, I believe, a maximum <laughs> under our rules. I think it's a maximum of three motions on the floor at once. So. Okay. I move substitute motion to deny the variance. As to the rear as, as, okay. Do we have a second? And I, request, I second that. Call the question. And I request that I call the question. And I second that motion. So I can make a substitute to his substitute, correct? No, because I've called the question. Now it has to be a vote. No, well, call the question means if two thirds of the commission approve the calling of the question, then you can move on to the vote. Okay. So Do we have a I, vote on the calling the question? Yes, you have to vote right now since he's made it. Everything stops. Now you vote on calling the question. All right. So that was by Commissioner Groman, seconded by Commissioner Pavlik. You don't need a second on the call the question. You, oh, you can don't? just okay. Well, she did it anyways. But yeah, at this point, you would just roll call however you'd like. I think we'll need to do a roll call for this then. So the motion is is per staff's recommendation to deny the application. No, it's no, on it's the, the call and the question. Oh, the call to question. This, yes. this just means that all debate will end and you will move forward on Commissioner Groman's motion if two thirds, if two thirds of the group okay, okay. approve calling the question, then you would vote on the actual motion. I vote no. Sherry, uh, the call, call the roll. You call the roll for the vote then. Yes, we're calling. We're call, doing roll call oh, right okay. now. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Sherry Pavlik. So. Yes. Yes. Yeah. To your call the question. Okay. Yes. Mike Kelly. No. Glenn Groman. Yes. Sherry Scarborough. No. Lisa Revis. No. Alex Brumfield. No. Mark Beatty? No. Jess Sauer? No. So then does it revert back to I'd the like initial? To a, I'd like to make a motion. I'd like to make a motion to approve a type two variance to allow a reduction in the rear setback for item ZV 2023-00375. And sir. just um, because this is a different motion now, can you clarify for the record that you're approving it based on a finding that all of the standards have been met? I'm making the motion based on the standing that all seven variance criteria are met. Second. Who seconded? Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, motion by Commissioner Rebus, second by Commissioner Brumfield. I have, a, I have a question. Yes. So it's based on the testimony that has been presented or the backup information that was provided by the applicant and both? Everything that was presented to us, both verbal and written. Okay. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Uh, I think we'll need a roll call. Okay. Sherry Pavlik? No. Mike Kelly? Yes. Glenn Groman? No. Sherry Scarborough? No. Lisa Rev? Yes. Alex Brumfield? Yes. Mark Beatty? Yes. Jess Sowers? Yes. Five yes and three no. Okay. So the motion for the variance was approved. Okay, thank you. Uh, moving on. Board comments, anything? Nine was abandoned or postponed. Staff comments? No? No comments. Made a motion to adjourn then. <laughs> yeah, that, that was a conditional use. It wasn't a